borrow So no need for sorrow Oh, pass me the liquor Make it wasted See me know they wait for the weekend We hide to the weekend Pass me the liquor Let me get wasted Oh, we am bored Oh, we am bored Grab a drink, yeah, let's so fun we just getting started so we can't stop now So we can't stop now Oh, grab a drink and let's have fun We just getting started so we can't stop now Oh, yeah Ah, follow me I'm not dreaming Miss you, what the fuck about me? Follow me, oh, follow me Shuru tu, I don't be asa So I can see by your way now Now say one switch is real Missing my home, so many be ah, mommy need a weekend. We are right to the weekend. Oh, pass me the liquor. Oh, we am bored. Oh, we am bored. Grab a drink and let's some fun. Let's some fun. We just get it started so we can't stop now. So we can't stop now. Oh, grab a drink. So fun, yeah. it's why black. <laughs> yeah, why can't they sell us? So I called Anas and I'm like, okay, so <laughs> Anas is one of our producers, he's actually Muslim. I'm like, okay, so I'm like, really? <laughs> anyway, so uh, really exciting. And uh, there was a bit of complaints about prices of livestock, you know, You're that yeah, things have actually gone up. Uh, goats, because of the demand. Well, no, well, I'm not sure if it's because of the demand. Well, they attributed it, the people selling the products attributed it to the CD depreciation. Ah. You know, and I'm like, okay, you know, maybe, sure. you know, so the, the whole argument was that they brought these livestock from Burkina and all the other mm -hmm. regions, and then people are actually not buying, and oh. then they al also looked at the fact that and a, a cow, which may have been sold for 2,000 cities, is currently being sold for 3,500. What to get me? I want a baby cow. I have to litter the... Banana, she's like, oh, because of Salah, there's a high demand, so there's a high we demand don't have for any banana. fruits in the market. Mm. That's why the prices are expensive. And I'm mm. like, really? Is it? Mm. Is this really true? Or is she I, I don't know. I think people people would find excuses for everything, but then of course, with high demand would come increase in prices. Yeah. Um. So we are also while while there is that sad aspect there's also the good aspect of it being a holiday yes you at home you get to stay with us all day long yeah. because it's a holiday you, you you you'll be sitting on breakfast daily all day all long all day long all day it's long an all day show <laughs> Hey, we're going to be, be here all breakfast day. Breakfast at 7 p.m. We'll be doing I mean, breakfast that's the beauty of, of a holiday. Mm. You get to have breakfast all day. You don't <laughs> have to there. end breakfast at yeah. 10 or anything. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm just happy. I like how the weather has also started. Yeah. I mean, you can see the background. If you're looking through the camera, you, can, you decided, you know, Tuesday is a holiday. I'd wash on Tuesday. I don't wash over the weekend. And then at this time, then you start getting afraid. Say, yeah. <laughs> but you can, you've earned yourself a, a, a movie day, right? So mm. just today, have fun. It's eat. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah you, should, you should enjoy. But I, I did some research on um, how Eid al-Adha hmm. is celebrated. Hmm. So the full thing is Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Adha. Eid al -Adha. Hmm. And it's, um, it's celebrated I'm, I'm, by families mm -hmm. rejoicing, hmm. getting together, visiting the kinship, and doing the slaughtering um, a ram and feeding mm. people. So it's all about food. It's yeah. about love. It's, it's just oh, that, about that's why you family. like you like this particular one because it's all course, about food. You know, course. as much as you want to celebrate the salah with Muslims, you should also try to endure the Ramadan with Muslims as well. The fasting I've, period. I've done Ramadan. Oh, you me, know, my, 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 my Facebook invite. and Instagram I, 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 handle I'll, is. I'll not wait for an invite. <laughs> I've already made a list of all my Muslim friends. My Facebook yes. and Instagram handle is Jifa Ekia, and my Twitter is Jifa City TV. 
no, so I don't invite you. Feel free to invite me, so, and I'll come celebrate. Well, let this me give you a list of my, my Muslim friends. With you. <laughs> so the first Muslim friend I have that I'll be visiting, Rashid <laughs> Pelpo, Honorable Rashid Pelpo. <laughs> Honorable Rashid Pelpo, before Umar Risanda and then we are, you know, I'm starting with the big men. You need to put before, another NDC so we don't NPP so we don't think you're NDC. You have uh, Rashid, so you have to message someone from the you have, no, see, <laughs> Rashid so, yeah, it's, it's personal attack. Anyway, so I, I, of course we, we do we do love him on this program yes. and of course, all the guests that have been yes. on the program. Yes. Yes. Much much love, yeah. much love. And, and speaking of things, members of parliament are doing. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I didn't finish all my facts Sorry. I've learned about yeah, yeah, yeah. Salah. Free. I sent free. it to you, actually. Yeah. So, uh, the yeah. other one is, what's the humanistic meaning of the celebration? Hmm. And the humanistic meaning of, of Eid al, uh, Eid al, Adha, Eid mm -hmm. al Adha is obedience to Allah by commemorating this event. Hmm. One is following the footsteps of the prophet Ibrahim, who showed willingness to obey Allah, hmm. um, feed the needy, and really appreciate that not every... Yeah. I'm just really excited also. Well, it's a bit strange. When that part, you know that portion about Ibrahim and sacrificing his son and the likes, it's, 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 it's very similar, of course, to the Bible, where yeah. Abraham and Abraham. Isaac... Yeah, Abraham and know. Ibrahim are actually similar. Yeah, yeah. So it, it makes... I think that's the part of the Bible I don't like reading Would very you much. Your son for God? No, because I'm also called Isaac. So when, when I was <laughs> you just mentioned that chapter, oh, stop like, it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So oh. anyway, so we do, we do, of course, love, love so I'm much. Very One car leg. You go to <laughs> Umar Sadeh. Don't have to say something. Don't have to say something. Umar Sadeh will give us a good. See there, you buy car for us. He'll give us a good. But then it will be fun. It will be fun. Yeah, it will be. It will be, be so, be great, so much fun. Day. We can actually do a whole tour. Yeah, we should. Yes. And we'll document it and show you guys tomorrow. Yes. But speaking of shopping, I think something hmm. terrible is happening in Abu Bruchi. Yeah, actually yeah, yeah. terrible for the, mar the, the, the market people, but yeah. maybe not. Well, well the squat is yeah. actually. Um, their, their structures, I won't even call them buildings, their structures that they were living in are being or were demolished. It's such an exercise. We'll take a look at it. But still, happy Salah to each and every single uh, Muslim out there. You have indeed endured. We, we know one or two of them who, 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 who would not. We are hopeful that with the level of engagement, it, 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 there will be some form of understanding for the assembly to move ahead with whatever we want to do. We've given them a one month period. So from that is why the, that piece of land is being allocated for them to go and do their business in a more dignified way. And for the engagement, as you are aware, we are engaging them, talking to them, for them to understand the reasons why the assembly want to take the action. Particular reaction, but then in the course yeah. of the program, of course, we we are, we are, we may bring you yeah. the reaction. They, they said that they were not informed. Stop you from doing an illegal act because yeah. they are there by 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 virtue of the fact that well, they are actually not supposed to be there. You need a yeah. place to settle, but then this particular place. This particular place is not a hey, place that you can... Plate? Are you hungry? No, no, no. Child, I'm hungry. <laughs> we are talking about salad and food all, all the time. Anyway, so with this particular place, you're not supposed to be... You know, you don't have permission to be there. So that's how come AMA decide to, you know, put all those their X marks and, and, and the likes. I mean, there has been permanently, you know. So, so we need to take a, a second look at this. There's a fine line between offending people who are... But I think um, generally uh, it's good that they give them a one month um, notice mm. so that they can get their act together because some of them really don't have any options, right? So mm. at least you tell them, we're going to do this on this day, prepare where they did this to us and they did that to us. So if you at least give them that courtesy of saying yes, inform them and you, yeah. you have every right to, to demolish wherever it is that they are. I mean, I think it's, it's fair. It's, it's, it's only fair, yeah. but not... Um, required mm -hmm. but it's it's only fair so i think we should just it's, I, I still think it's a fine line you know mm -hmm. for instance um those mm -hmm. and the likes if if you if, if you intend to remove them what exactly are they going to do Where exactly are they going to apply their trade Precisely. you know all these it's things tough. we it's 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 a cultural thing mm -hmm. they grew up being exposed to it's a it's more more of a convention this is what they see this is what they've been doing this is ghana 
Yeah. You understand? This and to is be not... fair, they want to be closer to the customers. Because mm. for me, sometimes I might want to buy credit, but it's not that much of a need for me to walk all the way to some store. So mm. if I see someone on the street and they, they have the yeah, it may be their convenient. cars are being built, and the market women don't even go there because they feel as they don't go to these you places. You see, I, I, at the end of the day, I think you may have to take harsh steps, harsh mm -hmm. decisions. It's an egg and chicken problem. Yeah. So it's about, if, but then if you stop the, 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 the purchaser, mm -hmm. if you stop the person from, if you stop the purchaser from buying, if you stop the seller from selling, you restrict the market and it will turn into a new convention, a new culture. Well, like where how, I'll go to the other person who's right by the street. Right? Yes, so if we have more incentive, let's say I can buy my bread, hmm. I can buy my eggs, I can get everything I want and there's no one in the market, then I'll be forced to go to the right place but sometimes that's that's all on the saying. on the road yes people yes. are so, there so, so. What, what, what we're saying is if we stop the people on the road if we stop the people selling from the streets i'm all in the likes mm. if we need to buy something we still find our way to shop right to mm. buy we don't so then i'm looking at and it's it's actually less expensive mm. i just feel even as you're just going to wash it with water and, and just start salt. biting away and salt and salt, water and salt. <laughs> well sometimes salt <laughs> my advice i will but I, I, salt. I heard some really sad news yesterday mm. Mm. you know we watched beast of no nation mm. and my favorite favorite actor was striker mm. like even though he he barely mm. but then i heard some really sad news about him begging on the streets and yeah. how he was awarded thirty thousand dollars for yeah. his role but he has not seen the money mm. and i'm just like is this true mm. on the one hand his manager has also come out to say that he's lying right but then how do we how do we really okay. address these mm. issues I, I think we have an image of okay so this is this is striker Stryker from beast the of right no nation and, uh, in Bahamata Bahamata on the left, on the left. Yeah. so it was a re really but this is striker he's now so big look this is striker really now in the in the white in the white uh, shirt yes uh, you know some pullover of sorts now you see him on the right this was actually a movie it was a world-class movie a box a office hollywood hit, movie, hollywood movie not, with not idris elba no, no less than idris elba who is uh, contending probably he is probably going to be the next james, james bond. bond yes yeah. so that's his striker again so you see the two images you see and the one on the the one on the left actually uh, i don't think he's living in the country even right he's, now he's, he's such he's a huge star. he's in cape coast ah yeah. okay he's such a huge star right, right now Ibrahim Atta. he was well, i think well, I mean, one he's of the main so characters big that he said that he's not going to start in any african movie unless it's on netflix like, that's how big Abraham Abrahamata is right boy. now. You know, so it's really sad for mm. me that Stryker, and just a couple of days before that, Ebony's dad came out mm. to say that um, Bullet mm. didn't treat her well, or mm. all, all sorts of things we're hearing about our industry, saying, you know, promote local gift. Oh, you are quite, they are a bit of, the reports are varying. Okay, yeah. let me put it this way. So he says that, he was supposed to get to be very honest to be very honest i watched the video uh striker being interviewed and he was sounding extremely incoherent in my uninformed oh, i mean no, i don't think no, so that that's, that's, that's is my opinion yeah, yes with my little so. yeah. basic first degree in psychology that i have mm -hmm. appreciation of you know what i was watching here yeah. because we we're saying Thirty thousand. The interviewer was asking him thirty thousand CD or thirty thousand dollars. He wasn't. You but know, people have sure. come out to confirm that it was thirty thousand. Right. Well, and sometimes too, we are, hmm. we. I think as a as a country, let's let's assumed or mm -hmm. concluded that he was on drugs or exactly. On, no, on, no, no, you, you know, but I was alcohol. reading the comments hmm. and people kept saying, "Oh, he finished the money." Well, he his even, he even went. He even and, went on to mm -hmm. say that he starred in a movie. He was supposed to be paid ten thousand cities. They told him they used the ten thousand cities to buy him a suit. Okay, so um, Abraham Atta is not more or less treating him well, not really, but um, a report on citynewsroom.com confirms that, in fact, Abraham Atta, whenever he's in Accra, can visit Striker and the likes. So it's, I think there's a bit of inconsistency mm -hmm. on, on this fact that he was um, supposed to have been given an amount of money. He was in 18 years. So the manager more or less is keeping the money till he was 18 or something of the sort. And I'm explaining to to Jake. Jake is also in the industry. And I'm explaining to Jake before the program that, you know what? The manager keeping the money, he is not a bank. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to keep the money 
in trust. He's a trustee. Mm -hmm. So as a trustee, the person who was supposed to get the money, who is not 18 years, is a beneficiary. He's supposed to benefit from the mm -hmm. trust. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you can't leave him selling yam at a gogloshi. And begging. And what? Yes, that. You can't leave him doing that and looking the way he's looking. Mm -hmm. If, even if he was on drugs and doing all sorts of things, you being a trustee, you're supposed to ensure that he's put on the right track. Yeah. Because some amount of monies have allegedly been given his benefit. He's the beneficiary of the trust. Yeah. So what if something unforetold happened, bring him up? And if, and if this young man has any form of support, I think, personally, I think he should sue the trustee. I think so, too. I think he, he should he sue the trustee. To say For that all these years that he has not benefited from a big movie like, uh, what's the movie? Of no Beast of No Nation. Yeah the streets they put him to school he didn't want to go to school and i'm just like he's i think he's, acting. he's even done two movies or so exactly, after right. if it was that so terrible he not, wouldn't it's not have enough, any other movie it's not to enough do. to just come out and say he's 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 stubborn he's this he's that he's a child hmm. right he's a child who needs guidance well we do need to do more to protect our young people in the industry, hmm. right? From the lead out of it is the law, no, no, no. Of gender law, and children. It's about people taking really, advantage of the know, law. Protect, I'm telling protect you, if, kids. If, if this young man decides to take the step to sue, or any lawyer who is touched by this decides to him in recovering these monies, the manager will lose a lot more than he's actually thinking of. Yeah. I mean, it's very likely. You can't determine for the courts, yeah. but based on my appreciation of how the court system works or how the law works it's very likely that the beneficiary would benefit yeah. at the end of the day he's a beneficiary and it anyway, should be the case it yeah. should be the case i mean it, he it, honestly he's not looking very pleasant at all it, at all at, at all, all. I mean, at all. Really, i mean this really person sad. could be really huge and he, he could be a so superstar in, mm. in in beast of no nation i mean he literally melted my heart just mm. just watching him he was so young so gifted he he performed the part to to a t like but beast of no nation, I, mean, I didn't like i didn't like anyone inside though. you're joking i'm telling you beast of no nation is the first movie that i have hated idris elba oh, no. <laughs> Oh, I love, I no. love, I love Strike Amazing, mm. but, anyway. but it, 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 it still came out to be a nice movie. <laughs> it did, it did. I like how Idris Elba was able to change his accent to a, or at least attempt, to, attempt, I I attempt to change his accent to a all, local Ghanaian accent. <laughs> Charlie, want him to be James Bond? Oh. <laughs> We are complaining good, for good, Idris Elba to be James Bond. Good morning. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Mm. Thank you so much for spending your holiday with us. We are your host, Jifa Ekria Ametam. And I'm Isaac Wobo for Smenta. Now remember, we want to keep this conversation interactive, so always use the hashtag Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line. 0550-585-832. Stay tuned yes. to Breakfast Daily. Up next is New News Preview. Review. Yeah, interesting <laughs> stories there. <Yeah. laughs> Somebody so says they, they, are, they are retiring from, yeah, from politics. politics. So we're going to find out exactly who You don't want to be an is. ambassador. <laughs> I don't want it. We'll be right <laughs> we'll back. Look at that. Regular news checks as they unfold. 2020 news, all, all the time. Politics, sports, entertainment, business, and more. 2020 news, we bring you the world in 20 minutes. And that's all the news in 20 minutes. Go. Spend 30 minutes every weekday catching up with all the trending social media conversations of the day. If you tweet it, we'll read it. We might just even Skype you. Sometimes I feel, you know, when we, we ask, when somebody says something about me, Shut up, yeah, no, no, no. I might want to say something. Yeah. So, but when I say it, people shouldn't take it like uh, taking things, you know, personal and stuff. I've understood showbiz now and I really want to work on it like that. 30 minutes is all it takes, so use the hashtag. Three. Good morning, Ghana. Good morning, world. You're in tune to the Breakfast Daily on City TV. Stoneboy says so. Love. Boom.
They say, why you they love them like this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Hi, everyone. It's Miss V. Make sure you keep watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. Don't go anywhere. Tiptoe. Swag. Okay, uh, welcome back to Breakfast Daily. Now it's time for the news review segment for today. Remember to, you know, keep your messages coming through with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Just on your mobile phones. And it says here, diplomatic missions mourn Kofi Annan. Mm -hmm. So uh, the full story is on page 25. We're still mourning the passing of a great, great man. Otiku bows out of politics. Four stories on page 13 this morning of the Daily Graphic and also illegal structures demolished to pave way for Temamoto Way interchange. And a full story is on page 3 this morning. Now let's take a look at the Ghanaian Times. Corruption is killing Ghana. Auditor General has this to say on page 12 of the Ghanaian Times. Ghana opens book of condolence for Kofi Annan as plans for funeral gets underway. Government set to open $250 million Terminal 3 of KIA on October 2. That's, of course, the Kumasi International Airport. And uh, not forgetting police... Another story here, interesting. Police dropped treason charge against Koku Anidoho. Now, this is, this is interesting. We'll take a look at this story also shortly. And finally, SA opens Zuma corruption inquiry. Mm. Now, straight to some online story. Yes, so I'm going to start with citynewsroom.com. Uh, it says here, renegotiate the $2 billion bauxite deal with China. That's coming from Beijing. And um, mm. new Ameri deal will be transparent. That's coming from Amewu. And three airline operators to help manage national carrier. Finally, freight forwarders threaten strike over cargo tracking system. And now let's look at a few stories um, on My Joy Online. Proposal mm. to play. It's <laughs> 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 looking at me like that's that my team. team yeah. You better not mispronounce them. Hmm. But those are the online stories hmm. for you. So Kotoko is playing is is yes. well they have received a proposal to play Barcelona. Yes. And um, I, I I I don't think they should take it up. I <laughs> Why? think for their legacy <laughs> Why? And, they're gonna for win. their legacy and their good they're name. Going to win. They're going to win more. Yes. <laughs> We have to be optimistic. I don't think they should take optimism it out. Optimism is I the think way you know to go. Gracefully. You shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, go to FIFA and oh argue God. sovereignty. It's a flat to me to <laughs> bow, just, just bow out slowly. Now, um, before we start off uh, with our first story, and coincidentally, the story that we intended to start off with um, is a statement made by one of our guests. Dr. Kaminta Bezi is the former CEO of the SEC, the State Enterprises Commission. Good morning and welcome to Breakfast Daily. Good morning. Mm. How are you? I'm good. Okay. Yourself? Very happy good. Eid to you. Happy Eid to and you. Happy too. Eid to all our cherished uh, viewers. Mm. Should enjoy the holiday, even those who are not celebrating Eid. Yes. Yes. It's good to have you here again, Doc. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We've also been joined by Duke Mensa Opoku. Uh, he is a City News Parliamentary Correspondent, of course, for both uh, the FM and the TV. And he's also the host of Press Conference on City TV. Good morning, yes. Duke. Yeah, good morning, Jifa, and good morning, uh, mm. Force. Yes, happy sun. Abak um, Akade. Ah. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Yeah, as well. Yes, happy Eid. Yes. Anyway. So now we'll just jump, or uh, we'll start with on citynewsroom.com, renegotiate $2 billion bauxite deal with China. Now, a former chief executive officer of the State Enterprises Commission, uh, Dr. Kaminta, in July 2018, approved a master project support agreement facility for the construction of priority projects in Ghana by Chinese firm Sino Hydro Corporation. So, uh, it's more or less we have given them our bauxite, more or less, for, yeah. for a $2 billion infrastructure support, which would include the construction of roads, bridges, interchanges, hospitals, housing, rural electri electrification as well. So 
Um, Dr. Bezi has has his, you know, his his. He doesn't really agree with this particular arrangement with China or at least with Sino Hydro. Dr. Bezi, good morning once again. Good morning. Mm. So, can, can you please tell us more about your reservations with this agreement? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think the first thing we have to look at is the sort of infrastructure that the Chinese are going to give us. We really need good roads. We need bridges. In fact, as at uh, 2011, there was a 1.7 million housing deficit in this country, and it's growing. I mean, we are in 2018 now, so seven years ago. Um, of course, we heard about the issues of uh, lack of hospital beds and all the suffering that is bringing on Ghana. So we need hospitals. Yeah. We need rural electrification. In fact, if you go to my holy village of Tapu, um, my parents still don't have electricity, even mm. though one part of the village has electricity. So we need all those things. However... If the Chinese come in and provide this infrastructure, the electricity has to be paid for. The hospital has to be paid for. The housing will have to be paid for. We don't have jobs. How are we going to be able to access these facilities when they are provided? So what we are looking at is $2 billion. Again, what is the worth? Let's look at, um, again, 2011, when the late Professor Mills was trying mm -hmm. to get this STX housing deal. For $1.5 billion, we're going to get only 30,000 housing units for the security. And even at the time, the 30,000 housing units were not going to be enough. So it's a billion dollars for cities. Sorry, dollars. dollars. Thank you. $1.5 billion. Now... If we are going to get 30,000 housing units for $1.5 billion, how much of the $2 billion is left to provide hospitals, interchanges, roads, rural electrification, and the others? So I think it is not the best deal for Ghana if we are going to exchange the bauxite for just $2 billion worth of infrastructure. Okay. Um, you, you did say that... Um, in 2010, the Energy Ministry came up with a comprehensive document on how to make monetary gains from the bauxite. And uh, to you, the document was better than the recent $2 billion deal? Yes. Um, in 2010, um, I think April to be specific, mm. the Minister of Energy came up with this document. And it's a very huge, comprehensive document. They assemble, I think, the best of the best in this country in terms of energy mm -hmm. to come up with that document. And they didn't only look at the aluminium side. They looked at integrated aluminium industry linked with salt, linked with our oil and gas, the whole component. And they said that for the aluminium side alone, if we are to set it up with all the value chain in place, we are going to be able to employ, within four years of operation, 2.88 million people. And I have, in the analysis, said that if we are able to put the industry in place with the Chinese, if they want, instead of giving us infrastructure, give us the bauxite-related infrastructure. That will help even the Chinese themselves to mine the bauxite refine the bauxite, feed Valco, so we have the whole value chain, and so we get the benefit of it. Then employ the people. Now, when you employ the people, by my conservative estimates, if an average worker is paid a 1,000 CDs a month and given the 25% income tax, mm. That alone gives us $1.8 billion a year from tax revenue alone. Income tax, direct tax, they are not included, just direct income tax. And so it is going to be sustainable because these people are employed in the industry. They are working year on year, so year on year you are taxing them. 
and then you give us the opportunity to be able to build the infrastructure that we need for ourselves and be able to pay for that infrastructure. If you build houses and you and I cannot afford the houses because we don't have jobs, what are you doing? So give us the jobs, then build the houses, then we use our incomes from the jobs to be able to access the houses, to be able to access the hospitals. Okay. And, and, and sorry, before we move on to Duke, I just want to ask one final question. Why, why, why now? Why did you have to wait till Parliament approves of the, the Sino-Hydro agreement before you come up with this suggestion? And, you know, based on a report that was produced in 2010. Um, I didn't wait. Hmm. And in fact, um, it wasn't waited. I remember, I think it was March of 2017. I was at the Flagstaff House. I did a presentation to the Chief of Staff and elaborated the fact that if we're able to do the aluminium industry the way uh, President Nanado was talking about integrated aluminium industry, it was going to be beneficial to this country. So I made that presentation. And her arrangement was that we're going to have another presentation where we're going to include the Finance Minister and the senior minister. Mm. Of course, that didn't happen before I left office. And so that second presentation never happened. But that is not the only one. There is somebody who has stood her grounds at Valco, making sure that we're able to do things like this with the whole value chain. And um, he has also made presentations and was happy that the president did this. Then again, when I mentioned it to some government officials, and I tried to explain, they told me, oh, by the way, that's exactly what Nana is doing. So we didn't know the details of what this deal was going to be about until Parliament approved it. So it's not that I just sat down and waited and came up with this. No, I have been making uh, uh, presentations and trying to make sure that the right thing is done because this document has been around for okay. a while. Okay. Yeah. yeah. First of all, uh, there is a fundamental problem with the kind of economic model that we run. If you have you are running an economy where almost all the revenue that comes to you, and in okay. terms of the expenditure side, you are putting close to, I mean, more than fifty percent into paying of public sector wages and the rest. Obviously, that is not sustainable. So governments, I mean, and that is besides, that's that's We've not gotten to the part where government has to you know, find money to yeah. service debt and other things, all within the same 100% pool. Now, when you have a situation like that, governments have to be creative mm -hmm. to be able to get the funding to do the mm -hmm. roads, railways, th things like that. Also, and that will that will get the that will get the economy moving. In times past, many governments, including this, have resorted to loans largely mm -hmm. to be able to pass that as aspect of it and so and this is not the first time that probably would be is, this the, the government is saying this is a novelty in terms of yeah. the barter yeah but even that was a subject of heated debate in parliament mm -hmm. during the time that this the master support project agreement for this two billion sino hydro deal was tabled on the floor the minority were arguing that because of certain conditions that were in the agreement it amounted to virtually a loan and that the name was being changed but the minority of us the majority was, was, was insisting that well it was a better agreement and the signer had was going to get the funds at commercial risk to bring to us in exchange for our bauxite that's why those whatever were quoted but then this is not the first time we've gone this way in terms of collateralizing or putting mm -hmm. up front our, our natural resources mm -hmm. in the case of the buoy dam our mm -hmm. cocoa yeah. same this same chinese um, 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 China, with the issue of the um, what brought about the Atuabo gas and the two billion, even though we didn't get the, the CDB loan, we didn't get everything. There was a part where we had to use our oil as collateral for mm -hmm. that. So, in terms of putting our natural resources on the line for some of these things, it's not really a new, a yeah. new thing. I thought that, and I'm at a point when it was being discussed and the arguments were going off, I thought it was a novelty in terms of the fact that, well, this is not something that is going to add to our debt stock. As a country, but we are going to 
get some infrastructure out of it. And if you look at the infrastructure that was, I mean, listed, the mm. two, what was going to be used for, yeah. the even, roads, the, the even the first the phase, even the first phase, I mean, and it spread across the country from Tamale to, I mean, the Ashanti region to Brunong Afo, to, I mean, almost every, and then and they were going to, the roads and the infrastructure, construction was going to begin by, by the end of this year. So I, I thought that was a novelty. And again, not only the master support but, sorry, project I'm, I'm going to what mm. Doc is saying. No, I'm, I'm building mean, a certain foundation okay. for a point, you know. And in addition to that, there was also the Integrated Bauxite and Aluminium Development mm. Authority Bill, which was also passed, mm. which means that as part of this, and I mean, the process of extracting the bauxite, the process of refining, the process of putting it out there, and everything is going to be guarded by an authority and after this deal expires we have a whole governmental structure that is seen to it that the best out of the integrated uh, the best out of our bauxite as a natural resources comes up because there's a development authority mm -hmm. that's going to be look uh, that's going to look at that i think that as an infrastructure consultant what doc has brought up is also another view mm -hmm. that is instead of just looking at the infrastructure let us look at how we, we can get a bit more out of this agreement yeah. so that at the end of the day we, do, we just don't have hospitals and infrastructure that the people themselves cannot assess. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important aspect mm -hmm. that we should have. I mean, if you are, if you are lo looking at any public policy, you might, it's important that you look at it from all the dimensions, all the dimensions. So I think no country goes to the negotiation table with its, I mean, bearings down, especially the Chinese and what they've done in Africa so far. People prefer them to the, our, our traditional donor partners, the Western donors and others, because their loans and their agreements usually do not come with strings, the, the normal strings of democracy and things like that, usually. And I mean, the, what the Britain Woods institutions and others would usually ask for. They are just, you know, upfront this is what we want give us and then all of that but that does not mean that they are not coming with their interest or their, in their interest bearing slowed down no they are also coming to get the best the best out of you and increasingly people are most governments are becoming wary of the of the chinese when it comes to some of these yeah. some of these agreements i think that the aspect that is also being brought up by doc now is also very 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 important that if we avert our minds to we may be able to get more out of the agreement but i don't know we're, we're, issue, we're, we're, we're raising the issue of time. I don't, I don't really know. Now that we've passed the Master Support Agreement, we've passed the uh, Development Authority mm -hmm. Bill, all of those things have probably been assented to by the President and their, and their laws now. I, I, I don't know. And, and we, are, we, we, are, we are getting so ready to ensure that the, infra the infrastructure may be coming in. Probably, probably it may be too late to, to renegotiate. Do you yeah. think we go to the table when we are negotiating with our best interest at heart? Do you, do you think we put Ghana's interest first or we just take whatever it's given us? Unfortunately, um, over the years, for most of the deals that we've had, I don't think we put Ghana's interest first. I think people tend to put their own selfish interest first. I'm sorry, but that is the way I see it. Well, what what, what are the, some of these agreements that you can... Before I even go there, let me give you examples. Um, right now, the country that we tend to talk about in relation to development is Rwanda. Yes. Mm. But if you go to Botswana, look at some of the deals that they have done. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, I was talking to a colleague lecturer of mine, KNUST. He, he, he was the former head of department at the business school. Mm. He said to me that if you go to Botswana, they have one of the best gold refineries mm. situated next to the airport. Mm -hmm. So that about 90% of the gold that leaves Botswana is That's refined. Fine. Or is it diamond? I think it's diamond. diamond. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's diamond. They it's are diamond. the largest. They have, they have a refinery for gold. But they, they also have a diamond refinery, and that over 90% mm. is refined in the country. Mm. That most of the deals that they have to exploit their natural resources, they make sure that they go into partnership, and over the years, everything is transferred to the citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a model that we should be learning mm -hmm. as a, a country who holds ourselves at the beacon of democracy in Africa. But over the years, um, if I have to mention some of the projects, um, 
if you go back to the days of a champo, mm -hmm. I don't know how uh, the, the population we had at the time. When a champo wanted to buy buses for this country, he said, I'm not going to buy finished buses because I need jobs for my people. Mm. So let's set up an assembly plant. So we had a new plant assembly plant in Kumasi. We had uh, an office here in Accra. I remember when the ex-president Kofu came and they were importing Metro Mass. They did similar thing. They brought the chassis and the engines and assembled them here. That is creating jobs because that is what we need most uh, in this country now. But you go and buy buses wholesale and you bring them into the country. You haven't created jobs. Um, we did uh, uh, this housing at Saglemi, mm -hmm. the one that uh, Constructura OAS yeah. from Brazil did. The, we import glasses, we import window frames, we import doors, we import almost everything. Even to the extent that if you are not careful, they will import blocks. <laughs> right? Now, I said that you watch it. If this contract, this deal, is going ahead, all the cement, all the steel will be imported from China. Mm -hmm. So what is left that the economy will get? And any country where the economy is not in the hands of indigenous people, and at the moment we don't hold the economy, two-thirds of this economy is in the hands of Indians. Mm -hmm. The rest I don't know. What percentage is held by Ghanaians? And we get a golden opportunity like this to be able to create the sort of jobs that we, we, we need to create for our people and you say give us infrastructure in exchange for it. And I have to say, Duke, that it is not too late to renegotiate mm -hmm. because it's not cast in stone. Mm -hmm. They've signed agreements and other things. But the, the, the government can always go back and say, oh, I'm sorry, by the way, mm. um, the people are not in agreement. Just like they intend to review the American deal. Precisely. Yeah. It's not too late. Um, again, um, during Atamel's time, mm -hmm. the STX deal, they wanted oil, the Koreans wanted oil for the housing. Mm -hmm. The opposition said no. So it became a sovereign guarantee. And probably, we don't know, that's one of the reasons that deal was, was, was never consummated. Mm -hmm. So, Doc, let's also look at the other side of the conversation. Now, we've understood where you're coming from with local content and, you know, employing people locally. But we've also heard stories of contracts being inflated, right? So when you start to bring projects locally and you try to engage local businesses, I mean, we're still talking about the banking sector, right? Where a few individuals are going to sink us all deep in debt. So how do we clean all these things up before we start championing local content in the, in the context of our national development? Um, I'll use one word. Mm -hmm. Institutions. We need to build and strengthen our institutions. Um, that is the only way. Uh, you, we put in processes, we mm. put in the right systems, and that is the only way. I mean, if you go to uh, Rwanda, mm -hmm. again, I listened to a gentleman who was interviewed by Bernard Avle mm. a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. that you can register a land in six hours mm -hmm. in uh, Rwanda. Rwanda. The systems are there, the processes are there. You don't need to meet people to do it. Corruption has been taken out. Rwanda came out of uh, genocide. Uh, genocide in 94. Mm -hmm. 94, I had finished uh, 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 my master's. So it's not too long ago. So why can't we do it here? So we need the institutions, we need the right processes, we need the right systems. Okay, now, sorry. Now, I want to also touch on the fact that you seem to be hammering on on issue of jobs, for instance, job Precisely. creation. Yes. yes. But then the, the, the two billion, there's a purpose set for the two, two billion and those that have been mentioned, roads, hospitals and the like, are you saying then that maybe the jobs are more important than the construction of these projects? The roads, the hospitals, the housing? Um, I did say from the beginning of this conversation, you, you finished building the roads. You finish building the hospital, the houses, the people who don't have their jobs. You can't buy the house. 
if you you don't, don't have, have disposable the, income. the the, the uh, how do you call it disposable income exactly but you do agree there's a housing deficit so there's a need for housing as well there's a the need country. for housing but and you do agree also that with the hospitals we also have free health care in the country so it won't be an issue of affordability no, there will be an issue of affordability. Even right though now, you more or less free health care. And, 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 and also there's a problem with availability of these hospitals. So it's important that these hospitals be constructed. The only way you can sustain them, there are people now who cannot even afford to go to the hospitals. Yeah. The only way to sustain it is to have disposable income hmm. for majority of the people. Then you can sustain them when you build them. If you build them and the people don't have the ability, what have you done? Basically nothing. And let me just add that in 2007, again, during uh, uh, Kufour's time, Bowen came here to Ghana mm. and wanted to set up. Because, you know, aircraft, the body is made up of aluminum products. Mm -hmm. But they realized that Valco was not producing enough. So they couldn't set up. So, again, this is a golden opportunity that if you we set missed. up the refinery oh. and you have Valco uh, uh, producing at full capacity, we we'll have all these factories coming here. We can make alloy wheels here, a whole chain of things. Um, wires, electrical wires, it's got aluminum component in it. Right now, we import most of the electrical wires into this country. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a golden opportunity that the government must not miss. Now, Doc, just clarify this for me. I know we have to go on a quick break. How is this different from, let's say, a government is in power, they decide to work on Project A for national growth, then another government comes to power, they leave that thing? Because, I mean, you use Botswana as an example. We've had times in history where we've decided to, you know, own our own natural resources, develop them, manufacture them, rebuild industries, and then they are neglected. Another government comes into power in all these states, um, institutions are left to, 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 to die. So how is this any different from, from what's happened in the past? Well, um, the difference is that with this one, we, it's more or less what you call a public-private partnership. Mm. So it's not just a solo government activity. Okay, like the way it happened in Nkola's time. Yes. And, the rest of and so... Of course, the Chinese will not want their investment to waste. The government will want to get the benefit of it. I want to hear what yes. you have to say, but we do have to take a quick... Yeah. with your favorite personalities. Be our guest on Saturdays from 2 to 4 p.m. for the most exciting moments on TV. for real entertainment right in your living room. Saturday Live on City TV and City 97.3 FM.
Okay, uh, thank you very much. It's still Breakfast Daily right here on City TV. Now, um, we, we were actually talking about the issue of the two billion, uh, you know, I, I call it an exchange facility that we are enjoying in respect of uh, Sino Hydro exchanging our bauxite for certain infrastructural projects. Yeah. Now, we will be looking at Otiko bows yes. out of politics. So I'm going to read from uh, page 13 of the Daily Graph. After 13 years of active politics so that she can enjoy life with her children. She also said that her husband was not feeling well. And for the past five years, he's been, uh, she's been taking care of him. So she wants to just spend more time with her family and enjoy. She's, she's now 56 years old. And um, it also says here that she... She, she's not going to take the appointment to go to Italy to serve as an ambassador, but we'll just focus on life and family. Your thoughts on that? Um, wherever Otiko is now, if she's listening, my respect for her has gone up tenfold, if not a hundredfold. Wow. Um, a lot of people have tried to use the husband's issue mm -hmm. as a political issue. But Otiko, people who know her, know her up close, is very family oriented. Wow. And has been taking care of this husband for quite some time. And I'm sure, even though I don't know, that it is because she doesn't want to leave this man on his own and take up an appointment outside that she has decided that if I'm not going to stay in Ghana, then let me leave politics on one side and concentrate on the family because, first of all, um, respect for the family, the children, and I think that is the reason why she has You, made you don't think decision. she could have simply gone with her ex-husband? Um, I don't want to yeah, speculate Yeah, the paper reports as her ex-husband. Well, um, ex-husband, but she is very much the one taking care of him yeah because yeah. i well i don't know first thing that came to mind personally was that maybe she could have just gone with him to italy i mean being an ambassador well we don't know the situation or the conditions that he is in now and why she has decided that yeah the best place to take care of him is here in ghana and mm -hmm. i i think that is the reason. So it has also, absolutely, to, to you, it has absolutely nothing to do with claims that it's a demotion from minister to ambassador. I don't think so. You don't think it's a demotion? No. No, no, no it's, it's, it's not a demotion. Um, people have gone out as ambassadors and they have come back into this country to take up other positions. So hmm. I don't think that is the reason. I think she just wants to be close to the family. Okay. okay. Now, Duke, uh, let's look at Otiko's 13 years. <laughs> in politics. Are there any highlights that you personally... Well, <laughs> what you 13 years in politics? Well, she began very much from the media, public light. She was just a program she used to host on GTV. Mm. Um, Koko. Mm. So it was, um, was a kids educational program. I think short from Akosombo International School then. She was then called the, the Mom on Call. Oh. So, I mean, really, that was how she got introduced to the public in terms of I mean, public engagement and people seeing yeah, We used to watch that show growing up, the Coco Coco show on GTV. So growing up. And um, before I mean, anybody could realize she was in the front line of politics, but she, she comes from a political family, a background of, of, of politics. The father, Henry Jabba, was, 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 was involved in, as a, was involved in I mean, public life as a businessman mm. and as a, politi as a politician. As a political person in in the second um, republic under 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 Buzia, so the politics is really much 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 in the family. And then this, I think, a sister, half sister, is a to President Mahama, a former President Mahama. That's Joyce Ba hmm. Mutari. So it it's 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 been in there. For me, her journey, especially as a minister, has been characterized by a lot of controversy. By controversy first. Her approval and her, her vetting, appointment process and her vetting. Mm -hmm. She was one of the few ministers who, I mean, one, yeah, one of the few, one of the few, and probably her Catherine Afeku and then Ejaku and all of them. 
But her issue really was with what she had said about her own cousin, President Mama is her cousin. Mm. Uh, over some hot campaign matter and what she what she had said on the campaign uh, um, platform. I, I don't I don't want to repeat exactly what she said. So and then she I was asked to apologize and she was stick by her words. I mean typical Utiko fashion. She would speak her mind and I mean tell you exactly what she thinks about the issues and all of that. So I I, I think that and then of course there are some comments that. She, 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 she made in the course of her job as a minister, which mm -hmm. people didn't really take kindly to the statement at Kobo Girls that women should avoid wearing, or young girls should avoid wearing Scaring. short uh, scares yeah. to ward off rapism. Which, I mean, I mean of obviously, did not sit down with people. Extremely who, offensive. Yeah, but, I mean, on the, on, on the a, a brighter light to, I mean, it's also under her, 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 her management of the gender ministry that the He for She campaign um was 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 I mean, instituted just to ensure that a lot more males are sympathetic towards the female cause mm -hmm. and um no minister passes through that um ministry without having issues with school feeding it's mm. it's a big part of the gender ministry. <laughs> and i think that i mean it, it was also one of the source of her one of the issues with the then Northern Regional Chairman Bugu mm -hmm. if you remember, yeah. Yeah. over the Good Saga and all of those things. <laughs> so I mean, at time as as a minister, really, I has I mean both ups and downs, really, as as it is with 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 every human human endeavor. I think she's she's she served well. If it's for compassionate reasons, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's it's rare. It's mm -hmm. rare in Ghana that. People would reject political, especially um, you know there's a there's a certain mindset about a diplomatic person or an ambassadorial position that, will, especially apart from some countries. I mean, if you are posted to US, UK, um, Japan, China, mm. so like, some of the Ghana strategic trade partners and others, you know that is work. Mm. But apart from these countries, you are posted to places and it's just you know. Well, what it's, does the Italy post actually mean for you? What do you think? Well, for her to be posted, uh, it could, could mean. I mean, I, I don't want to be interpreting what the president was thinking when mm -hmm. she posted. I mean, the, the the woman who is coming from uh, Paulina, mm -hmm. she's yeah. a. I mean, we've heard that she was actually the president's first choice Aww. for the position of gender minister because she's worked in, in in gender and development work all her life. Mm. You mean the woman who's coming from Italy? Yes, Paulina Abayage. Mm. Mm. Yes. Who's coming from 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 Italy? Mm. Yes, she's she's going to, to Upper East. Upper East, yes. Mm. So I mean, she's virtually worked a lot in a lot in development aid, and she mm. understands that parts of the country very 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 very, very well. Mm -hmm. So to have Otiko go there really for me was probably just go and cool off, mm. you know, mm -hmm. because I mean, apart from probably the ANI Vitor that is working in our oil fields now. It, Italy really does not have any commercial interest in the country. In the country, and when they themselves they are having their own issues, I mean, it, it took them like four, four, virtually four months to form a government after the hung elections that they had. Uh, yeah, recently. Just, re just recently. Yeah. So, for 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 declining the position on compassionate grounds that he wants to look after the um, ex-husband and for, yeah. for 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 him to get well, and um, I think it's 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 good. It's a noble reason. For, for for rejecting it, but no, people no, may also say sorry. that okay. with the issue of the uh, um, demotion and all of that, mm -hmm. as an ambassador, she may have to, she would have to be under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Foreign Affairs yeah. But people also say that if you are in, an, in another country, you are, you are more or less the president. You are more or less, I mean, the country's representative. Mm. You are called Her Excellency, you know, yeah. from Honourable to Her Excellency. That's, yeah, that's but, but 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 I want to look 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 at the facts on the ground. As to whether we can even say it's a demotion, and maybe if it's a demotion, that may be the reason why she she may have declined, um, because issues about taking care of her ex-husband, I I think it's fair to say that maybe she could have still gone with the ex-husband, or she may not necessarily need to be physically present to still take care of someone. Now let's look at her achievements over over the years, and I just want to read this mm -hmm. report shortly. Under some of her achievements in her interview with uh, Daily Graphics, Rebecca Kweku Duho. So the first one, she says, um, it was under her watch that the ministry, or she developed a five-year strategic plan, which would be implemented in phases to eradicate the issue of Kaya from 
the streets. Mm -hmm. So a five-year strategic plan to eradicate the issue of Kaya from the streets. Well, it's, it's been almost two years already, and I don't see anything in respect of removal of Kaya from the streets. And to have a five-year strategic plan for this particular venture, maybe it was a bit of ambitious to think you'll be able to do this in five years. I, I think. And also, um, she, she also, so additionally, Miss Jabba said, Operation Get Off the Street was her special initiative to rid the streets of children who hawked for a living. Now, Operation Get Off the Street is something that was launched in August 2017. And I, I, I don't find that achieved in, in, in any significant way. You know, we still have children on the streets and um, amongst others. So, uh, by way of achievement, some would say that maybe she did not, she may not have done much with the goals that she set for herself. And maybe that's why the president may have sent her from the gender ministry to be an ambassador in Italy. So, in itself, it seems a bit like a demotion. Would you not agree with that assertion? Um, demotion. I wouldn't say so. Hmm. Uh, Duke was talking about the fact that Italy hasn't got a lot of business interest here and is probably not one of the top one. I disagree hmm. with that. Italy has been present in this country long before we became independent. And when we became independent, it was Italians, uh, uh, skilled workers working with Ghanaians that developed most of our construction industry. Most of the historic buildings we have here, they have Italian signatures. And if you look at uh, a number of the construction companies, I don't want to mention names, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but most of them are Italians. So Italy has got a very strong footing in this country. In fact, some of them are even naturalized Ghanaians. Wow. So Italy plays a very important role uh, in the economy of Ghana and the ambassador to Italy is very very strong in fact it ranks amongst the top in Europe mm -hmm. so anybody going to Italy um, the status to me is very high mm -hmm. so I wouldn't say as compared to that of a gender minister um, you can't compare the two. minister you is a minister, minister. You, can't really, you can't compare the two and apart from that you are in the country directly influencing policy like she said uh, she started some initiatives now i would say that um it's not every achievement that will manifest in a physical form if she's been able to put together a document which is a strategic document then initiative will have action plan and other things that in itself is an achievement it's like this is the foundation Anybody who comes after me, build on it. Mm. And so I would, I would say, I would agree to the fact that it is an achievement. Mm. Now, if it is implemented, and it's implemented the right way and we get the results, then it's an addition. Mm. But most of the time, unfortunately, um, a lot of the documents, like I was referring to the mm. 2010 mm -hmm. uh, Ministry of Energy, Energy and, you get your plan, you get your action things, everything, then it is put aside and nothing happens. So we are not able to get the benefit of a lot of these initiatives. But otherwise, I think um, it's a good thing that she has done. And if we're able to look at it and see what we can achieve out of it. And for me, the issue of children on the street has always been a border. Mm. And for anybody to even think that, let's have a plan of action to get rid of them on the streets, I think she needs to be applauded for that. Yeah. Hmm. Now, that, that's, this was her advice for women. Uh, she said that she's, she's proven that what a man can do, a woman can do better. Uh, but unfortunately, the country, the Ghana, was relentless on outspoken women. Do you think we were fair, we are fair to outspoken women or, or we we encourage women to be meek um sorry to say but in ghana we are not fair to women mm. when women are outspoken and when they take leadership role 
we brand them with all sorts unfounded allegations and that sort of thing and then we turn around and say our women are not taking responsible positions i'm sorry we don't treat women the way they deserve to be treated and i think we should do better as a Thank country you. duke your thoughts on that i saw you laughing <laughs> well <laughs> well, I, well i mean that's it's, it's a given i mean especially people who have been at the gender ministry um but i don't want to talk about what's happened to oily towns when she I mean, right from her vetting, uh, she, the questions, the kind of questions that were fired at her for some of her views and all of yeah. that, when she went there, even now that she's left the place, because of that public rule she held, people are even making a big issue out of uh, divorce, I mean, which is not... So, uh, on that score, I agree. But particularly with Otiku, I think some of the problems she faced at the gender ministry, she, especially um, in the light of media bashing and things like that, some of those things could have been avoided. I mean, she... Uh, if you if you have a certain temp if you bring a certain temperament to political office or public mm -hmm. office, it also helps in as much as the controversy. But don't men do the same thing? I, I Wasn't she that. playing the game of men? No, I get that. But 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 if you know, and right from her right from her vetting, mm -hmm. for comments that she made, look at the the comments about um, what do you call it the the girls. The girls. But if a man the had made that who, comment, the would, we, would we have the Ghana the Ghana, the, same the Ghana which we are we are in today? Mm -hmm. The person would have received the same same yeah. bashing, even not even on traditional platforms, traditional media platforms mm -hmm. or social media. They, because they, Alaji, you know, Ali Duaruna, for instance, yes, recently made such a comment. About two years ago, went yeah. to make some comments about Yvonne. Lydia, 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 Lydia Forsen and, and Yvonne Nelson, yeah. and then mm -hmm. she also she also got that. So the kind of I mean vibrant, engaged youth that we have now on social media, especially. You won't make certain comments and get away with, especially yeah. if, if irrespective if, of gender. Yes, actually. if irrespective of gender, especially if you are drawing your salaries from the public purse mm. and our taxes. So some of those comments, I think, but 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 on the whole, I mean, the, the way she, the way she has the way she managed issues at the ministry, especially school feeding, there are some issues, but we didn't. It wasn't much of a big issue as it was in previous years, as as she is there now. The plans to check, mm. I mean, streetism and. KIA and all of those things, those ones are commendable. But for me, most importantly, we don't have a lot of people putting family and and, and compassion ahead of, of, of politics, power. ahead of power in this country. And uh, for, for someone whose public profile has been the way it is while she's in office, this is the probably means that we judged her harshly and we didn't even know who the person was. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well. So, I, Jifa, I guess, are I you going to um, take up some leadership roles I, I, in this country? I, I hope more women are inspired. I really think more women are inspired to take up the next Are you, are you, are you in the next elections? Men will be Assembly one for East Lebanon. That would be a good start. Now, let's take a look at this particular story. Police drop trees in charge against Koku and Nidoho. The story says the Attorney General's department has directed the CID of the Ghana Police Service to drop the treason charge against Mr. Koku Anidoho, uh, the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC. Well, for lack of enough evidence to prosecute him. So, now, the Director General of CID, Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCOP, Mame Yatiwa Adodankwa, disclosed this to the Ghanaian Times in Accra yesterday. She said the AG, uh, the Attorney General's advice followed the submission of the dockets of the alleged treason case against Mr. Nidoho after he was cautioned by the CID. So finally, they have dropped the charges against him. I'll start with you once again, Doc. This has been obvious right from the, hmm. the beginning. That they will not have hmm. enough evidence? What was, what was the treasonable offense in there in the first place? Well, he made some pretty I mean, he made a statement, statement that mm -hmm. because of a certain action taken by the government, mm -hmm. Uh, the likely situation was going to be this. Mm -hmm. What was treasonable about it? Go back to the days. Uh, what did? Uh, what I, did? I, I, just, I just want to remind viewers of mm -hmm. what he said. He said yeah. somebody should tell Nanado that history has a very interesting <laughs> way of repeating, repeating itself. <laughs> On January uh, 13, 1972, a certain Colonel Ignatius Kutue Champon led a revolt that removed the Progress Party from power. That is what he's quoted as saying. Isn't that a bit extreme? No. The, uh, uh, the, the, there are certain conditions mm -hmm. that lead to certain situations. Mm -hmm. We know any time a military uh, coup takes place, mm -hmm. they give reasons. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is this, there is this. And he's saying that for certain actions that are going on, mm -hmm. 
is likely to result this way. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Anthony Cabo mm -hmm. made certain remarks, similar remarks, when he talked about Afghanistan or happening in this country. Was he charged for treason? Kennedy Japan made worse remarks. Was he charged for treason? He was actually. So, really, I think it was just much ado about nothing. And right from day one, I didn't mm. think this was going anywhere. And mm. uh, obviously, where we are Kennedy now, was, was charged. Right? He was, yeah. well, at least he was he picked was, up. He was, he was, but he was, charges he was were preferred dropped, against him. I mean, yeah. There yeah. were some technical issues. First, they, mm. were, they, they went to a court that they were not even supposed to go to. Mm. For me, this, this goes to the core of the fact that increasingly the police is... The police service is putting their professional competence at the peril of politics. Mm. It's bad. Just, I mean, just a cursory look at the definition of what treason is. So the crime of betraying one's country, especially by attempting to kill or overthrow the sovereign or government. Mm -hmm. how, the, how, how does what Koku said amount to, to, to this? But, but, but Duke, let's look at the... He rightly mentioned Rwanda yeah. earlier on in our hate conversation. Speech. We've seen how hate speech can spill over into something else. So you don't charge so you don't, you don't, there's you don't always charge, not, not necessarily not choosing. necessarily hate do you, speech. Do you know the, do you know the, 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 the consequences hate. that comes with that mm -hmm. comes with treason? Do you know? Do you know what? I yeah. mean, if you have been convicted of treason, mm -hmm. it's actually what, capital what punishment. Yes. Yes. So, but you, don't you, you think? Don't you think he mm -hmm. he went a bit far, considering yes, I mean, that, that one, we're, we're fortunate enough to be in Ghana? Mm -hmm. But if this had happened in another country, a civil war could have occurred. I, I agree. I agree. So don't kill the mosquito with a sledgehammer. What should don't, we kill the mosquito with? Don't 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 we charge the person. The mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> don't charge. <laughs> don't charge. The don't, charge don't, don't charge the person mm -hmm. with 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 something that is far and above what he, what what he committed. And for me, I think that the, and it happened in the case of Kennedy and Japan. Mm -hmm. He made those damning comments. Mm. He was picked up. Charged with treason, he was even taken to a court. Quite intense. He was even taken to a court that did not even have jurisdiction over those issues, mm -hmm. which 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 means that some people in the force were trying to please some people, mm. and it's the same case which has happened with this with 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 Anido. It had all the markings and the writings of of of, of something that was motivated from 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 higher. And for me, I think that probably it's about time we look we, we look at the leadership of various public service institutions mm -hmm. the electoral commission police immigration those 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 faces so that it's not as if people have to do some things to be noticed by the appointing authority so that in any case they can be pushed up or or, or something like that to or to please politicians in public because if we continue do, doing that we are putting critical state institutions at at at, at, at the behest of of, of of politics partisan mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. for, for for that matter in as much as the comments he made are condemnable it should not have been treated the way it's been treated now i would say that there are x all over the face of the police mm -hmm. and if these things continue the credibility the professionalism the competence of state institutions and critical state institutions such as the police are but you, you, you do make a fine doubt. point i mean looking at the at the punishment mm -hmm. for treason it was a bit extreme to even charge a person with treason in the first place mm -hmm. if you're not going to go ahead with a full prosecution you know that when he's found found guilty he could be killed Mm. You know, he could be sentenced to death, you know. So, uh, what, what would have been the outcome if he was sentenced to death because of that comment he passed in a press conference? You know, looking at the outcome, the ultimate outcome of the punishment, I think it was a bit extreme for him to have even been picked up in the first place. In a democracy where we are encouraging free speech. Hmm. In a democracy where we are encouraging, of yeah. course. But, but, but the freedom should, are There shouldn't be by, hate speech. Yeah. But I'm saying that hmm. if, it is hate, if it was hate speech, or it, it should be charged... No, you can't charge a person. You can't charge a person. The hate speech is not an offense. Yes, there's no offense called hate speech. So, no loss. Yeah, you know, there's no offense called hate speech. So they will try to subsume it under something else. Mm. So I think they went extreme maybe by trying to put it under treason because it was it was a bit harsh. It was a bit harsh. Um, Doc, we'll take maybe your final comments on this particular issue. On the Coco and Yudoho issue? Coco and Yudoho. And maybe you well, rehash your, your assertions in respect of the two billion Sino Hydro deal. Well, with the Coco and Yudoho issue, I'm happy that it's mm -hmm. been dropped. Uh, but to use it as a, a basis to say that we should all be guided by the statements mm -hmm. we make, um, it's not always helpful. It can cause a lot of things, like if you, uh, Jifa referred to Rwanda. Rwanda. Mm -hmm. You never know. In a fragile situation, 
you can make one small comment and it, it can ignite a lot of things. So we should all be guided in the way we talk in public and that sort of thing so that we, we continue to enjoy the peace and tranquility that we have in this country. Mm. Um, the box site and I've made my, my statement known and I've also, I didn't just leave it there. I gave a roadmap as to how I think we should go. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be my roadmap alone. What I'm looking forward to is that for things that will benefit the country, we should remove all partisan issues and say, let's bring in the experts. Let's sit down. We want this for the country. How best can we implement it? I mean, a government will have to take credit for it. But it doesn't only have to be the government's people that should look at it. Bring in the experts from wherever you can find them. Even the opposition might contribute uh, positively to it because at the end of the day, it will benefit everybody. I am very much aware of a situation where an opposition government said certain negative things about a particular project. But as soon as it was approved, they came knocking at the doors of a particular minister asking for benefits of that project in their constituencies. So we should look at these things in a way that will benefit us as Ghanaians and not in a narrow partisan way. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. And uh, Duke, thank you also for joining us. No, on you don't give me last name. No, you're, you're fine. Oh. <laughs> thank you very much, Duke. You have, you have your own show, uh, press conference. Press conference every, every <laughs> Sunday night, right? Okay. Okay. Good night, so Sunday. thank you very yeah. much, um, Dr. Kaminta Bezi. He is a former uh, CEO of the State Enterprises Commission, and he is still asserting the, the, the point that we need to take a look at the uh, $2 billion sino hydro agreement because we, can, we, we, we have the, the chance of making more if we exactly. look at it in a different way instead of just the $2 billion, which might not even benefit the ordinary Ghanaian. Thank you very much. Your point has been well made. Thank you very much also, Duke Menso Poku. He is a city news parliamentary correspondent and also the host of... Uh, press conference. Stay yes. tuned to Breakfast Daily. Thank you so much for sending in your messages. We shall be addressing most of them shortly. <laughs>
that's engaging, detailed, and loaded with factual and incisive analysis. It's The Big Issue, your preferred Saturday morning news and current affairs analysis program on City TV. Tune in this and every Saturday at 9 a.m. and hear the newsmakers discuss the top issues for the week. At that time, at that time, Charlotte was complex. I'm not defending Charlotte. I'm, 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 I'm talking about the way we are, we behave like hypocrites and ostriches in this country. At that time, she was a, a perfect person. It's the biggest you with Selma Donu on City TV this and every Saturday at 9 a.m. Trust it, me I go give it to you, you know you go love. Tonight I go nail you out from the cross. Today be today, now me be the boss. I'm the definition everything you never had. So my baby give me something me I never had. So baby put it on me, put it on me. Cause you just cut out my head, yeah. Say you the boss up my brain, yeah. See so baby put it on me. Put it on me, cause you just cut out my head, yeah. Say you the boss of my brain, yeah. Say I could give you the world if you truly the one. And give you the sun, girl, you don't understand. See, believe in your man, I will be here to stand by you. Say I could give you the sun if you truly the one. And give you my word, girl, you don't understand. See, believe in your man, I will be here to stand by you Shem, me see a dear way you know me see for pity me so the way you do it girl mommy will see see me so baby girl wine 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 just do the grind on me yeah me see a dear way you know me see for pity me so the way you do it girl mommy will see see me so baby girl wine 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 just do the grind on me yeah see put it on me Put it on me, cause you just cut out my head, yeah. Show you the boss of my brain, yeah. It's white black. What is, what is, what is, what is. Good morning, Ghana. Good morning, world. You ain't tuned to the breakfast daily on City TV. Storm Boy says so. Keep it locked. Don't log off. Boom. They say, why you they love them like this? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Hi, everyone, it's Miss V. Make sure you keep watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. Don't go anywhere, tiptoe, swag. I know about that photo. Same team, Titia, who I go talk to, yeah. This is Kwesiata, and you're watching Breakfast Daily. Ground up to the top, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jealousy go shame I can see bad boy Jealousy go shame Whoa. What's up guys, your boy Kitty And right now you are watching Breakfast Daily Oh Lord of mercy Let's go My name is Juliette Yaa Asantua Asante Keep watching Breakfast Daily on City TV Hey family, my name is Joe Metal and you're watching Breakfast Daily on City TV. Keep watching, don't go nowhere. Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily and all week long we've been speaking to 
the guys over at the Chalawater Street Festival. Just find out exactly what's going on there and how all of us can participate. Today, I'm joined by Ninoy, Bujin, and Ayanda, who was here yesterday. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you? So, Ni, I'll start with you. Tell me what your your involvement with Chalawate is um, and just what to expect in general of the festival. So, I work with the festival as a, as a music coordinator and I'm coordinating all performances, music performances for the festival. Okay. Um, on the side, I'm a filmmaker and photographer and I'm presenting my first feature film, my first independent film, sorry. And Noir Define Your Negritude, it talks about blackness. And Please say that again, Noir? Define Your Negritude. What does that mean in English? <laughs> blackness. Blackness. Or black, define your blackness. Define your blackness yeah. in negritude? Yeah, or? negritude. Um, negritude negritude is, a is a movement, right? Yeah, a by, concept mm -hmm. by Senghor mm -hmm. from Senegal. Who was the first president. Yeah, and he spoke about the different ways we can define our blacknesses or define ourselves as black people. Mm -hmm. uh, well, back to the music, yeah, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we're having four music shows. Wow. So on Thursday, there's the acoustic night. Okay. And then on Friday, there's the masquerade jam. Uh. And then on the weekend, that Saturday and Sunday, there's concerts on both days from 12 in the afternoon to 11 late. Wow. So we've got lineups of DJs like Bougie, um, Ayanda's playing. We've got Inshallah music coming in. We've got um, so many. Uh, Kumasi Kwame. We've got Amaziba playing. Wow. Yeah, it's a long lineup. And I'd encourage everybody to go check out the lineup on, on the site and just get whatever information they can about and the, the website. Is? On the, the website is akra.altradio.com. Akra.altradio.com. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions about your first. Um, what is it? What is it called? Your debut project that you just mentioned okay. with the Negritude. But let me bring in Bujin. Tell us uh, where you're from. Is this your first Chalawate Festival? Have, have you participated in it? And what we can expect from you? Um, so I am Bujin and also known as Danny. Or go by my name that I go by is Danny. My Danny. My name is Bujin. Bujin, okay. And Which one should I call you? Danny, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I prefer Danny. Um, I'm from South Africa and I'm a musician and a music researcher and facilitator and a producer and documenter. So um, I work predominantly in using and creating and making work through sonics and through sound. And um, my Part in Chalewote is hosting a workshop today. Okay. Uh, that is music orientated and focuses or will will focus on um, embodiment of sonics and how you can work away from mainstream ways of performing. So um, or mainstream imaginings of of wh what music performance is or how music should be performed or how sound should be performed and how sound should be interpreted. Um, and then I am performing live on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you're performing three days? Yes. So, okay. Yes. What, what are you DJing? I'm DJing. I'm okay. DJing. And um, yeah, hopefully there'll be a, maybe a, a live performance, more nice. um, experimental, jazz, acoustic. Is this your first cello? Also? It is my first cello. What, yes. what made you decide to participate in it? Uh, well, Chalewoods is pretty well known in South Africa amongst um, certain circles and sort of cre certain creative circles that that move and orientate themselves or orientate ourselves. I would say around. Um, I would, uh, I guess, a Pan African agenda, if you'd like to call it that. But also, um, I guess people and creatives who are working towards connecting beyond just the place that they work in mm -hmm. and beyond just South Africa, beyond just Ghana, or beyond just wherever you happen to be situated in your practice mm -hmm. or in your work. Um, so yeah, that was one of the reasons is because a lot of the creative circles that I move in, um, we know about Chalewote and hey, it's a space to connect, um, if anything, mm -hmm. a space to connect with other creatives from outside of, outside of the country. Is this your first time in West Africa or Ghana? 
It's my first time in West Africa. Wow. Yes. I traveled first? to East Africa. My family is East African, so mm. I mean, I traveled to other parts of Africa East so Africa. far. Mm -hmm. But it's been fun. Nice, nice, nice. So yeah. back to you. What does Chale what to mean for this? I think as you're talking about negritude, I mean, in mm -hmm. Koma's version of negritude was the African identity, mm -hmm. right? It, it looks as though we have a sort of revolution mm -hmm. of the new generation. I don't want to call it woke, but like, you know, <laughs> a new breed of Africans who want to just step outside the boundaries that colonialism mm -hmm. created and really just come together as one. So how, how what role has Chalewosa played in just bringing not only Africans, but all sorts of people who are passionate about the creative sector together uh, in, in, in Ghana. So the main aim for Chaliwote is to encourage people to think critically. And for people to do that, they need space to create. And Chaliwote sort of provides a platform for people to just bring out any ideas they have about the way the world should be, the way the world should look, the way the world should feel, sound, taste, anything. And basically, bring as an amalgamation of all these things. And we're looking at uh, encouraging people to not stay quiet when there's a problem. Mm -hmm. We're looking to encourage people to be more outspoken about what is on their mind, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's talk about the negritude. Um, <laughs> because what I even from the negritude movement, right? Yeah. I think I identified more with Mrs. Mm. than Sengo because okay. on the one hand Sengo is saying negritude but then he's very polished and you know you don't really see him in the, in Jamestown yeah, for example true. but mm. Cesare was the kind of person that can hang with Sengo mm -hmm. but you can still see I he was relatable yeah. the average man could see himself exactly. in Cesare so tell me a bit about the work that you're working on and and what you discovered in your so, research for me it was basically a documentation of conversations young people in West Africa, mainly the Gambia, Senegal, Mali, had about what made them black and what, mm. what defined them as black people. So it was uh, recordings, videos, films, in bus conversations, voice notes of people in buses talking about how this won't happen in um, Europe or this won't happen here and there. And then you have someone say, but you're black, you can do better you can build upon your blackness as a person. You don't have to always compare yourself to being white. It's like a sort of pride, building a sort of pride as a black man to live in a space, create your own space. And I sort of tried to relate it to this year's theme for the festival, which is Parada. And Parada talks about um, creating a new sort of paradigm for black people to be able to live in a world where for so long we've been put aside, for so long we've been asked to uh, be like, play second fiddle to, to the white man, yeah. So in defining that negritude, and defining that pride in whatever situation, whether you're living the single type of life or scissor type of life, <laughs> you're still defining yourself as black and you're not comparing your living situation with what somebody in Europe would be living like because you have created something or defined something that works for a black man. Yeah. When can we come see that? So my film shows on Thursday. On Thursday, yeah, where? At Cocoon. Cocoon. Yeah. What time? It shows, it, it's there, so it's screening with a lot of other films, okay. so it's between the morning of 10 and 12, I think, yeah. So we can come to Cocoon from 10 a.m. to yeah. 12, and we see not only your film, but Yeah, but other a whole lot people. of films. Okay. And we've got um, Danny's, Danny's workshop today. Yes, what we've time is her workshop? What time is my her time workshop? Is, my time is from 12 until 1 at yeah. the National Theatre. And, the and National then right Theater. after that is a discussion with women in music, okay. or women mm -hmm. creatives in music. So what time does it start today, actually? So today that we can all head 12. there right away. Okay, 12? Yeah, and it ends okay. at 6. 6, yeah. and it'll be at the National The National Theatre Theater. Folks Place. What can we expect today, aside um, Danny's workshop? I think there'll be a couple of films, and there'll, there'll also be panels for mm -hmm. uh, discussions of films and for women in music, I think, and yeah. for people that want to learn about the business of being a creative, all of that. We would have workshops for that, we would have 
uh, panel discussion so that today. Okay. Now, Ayanda, as I'm talking to me and Danny, mm -hmm. I'm reflecting on even my own identity, right? How I got to discover my greatness as an African. And mm -hmm. one of the people who actually played a key role in this was um, Sembe, Osman Sembe. Mm -hmm. And just seeing his work at a time when everybody was just making movies in English or yeah. French, and this man chose to do his movies in Wolof, mm -hmm. right? And even in Gugi Wachiongo, who decided that I'm not going to write in English anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write in Swahili. Mm -hmm. They documented their experiences in this authentic form for me as a, as a young 16-year-old somewhere in the U.S. to take and actually see that I see myself in these people and I can find my true authentic self mm -hmm. in their journey. I know you are mm -hmm. documenting your experience. How important is it for us to document Chalewate, so that maybe the next generation of people, even people back home, can also see what goes on in, in Ghana. I mean, I think it's very important. I'm actually not documenting it. These guys are doing an amazing <laughs> job. <laughs> um, I was I was supposed to, that was a part, I was supposed to make an experimental film. Yes. So that was the arrangement um, when I was still coming with a colleague of mine that fell through. So I feel like the universe was showing me that I need to come alone and she felt like that as well. So my colleague, so she ended up not coming. So oh, now I'm say performing that again. a solo piece. <laughs> say so that I was again. supposed to come with my colleague. Okay. And we were going to document the performance and rehearsals working with women within Jamestown. Okay. And then at a residency, we were at in Bumalanga as well and put that together into an experimental film. Yeah. So I didn't end up, end up doing that um, because she couldn't come for personal reasons. And she also felt like the universe was telling her and me that I needed to come Aww. on my own and do the solo performance as opposed to... But um, I think um, when you were speaking about what you were saying, what, what resonated with me was how I think I found myself in music. Um, I'm, I'm a very new DJ, but I've also got music coming up um, as a, with this uh, producer from Berlin and Chile. So he also wants to make it into a vinyl, which people are not doing a lot of these days. Mm -hmm. It's very, very like analog, but it's also coming up as really cool. Can you explain what that is to us, a vinyl? A vinyl is basically a wax record press of, yeah, like of, a, of a music piece of music. So it's what CDs were. Yeah, the, the, the big one, the one yeah, that looks so like the 12-inch yeah. 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 okay, okay, yeah. basically that you put on. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what she plays on. Yeah. 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 You're kidding. Yeah. Why? <laughs> That's so cool. We're playing yeah. on, on vinyl for Chalewote. Why? Yeah. You couldn't bring them? Mm. It's, yeah, the it's, equipment is difficult. It's difficult, to, to find. it's difficult to find yeah. and um, it's difficult to travel with as yeah. well. Mm. So because it's so big yeah. and um, so like yeah big <laughs> mm. it's difficult to to move around with so yeah. if and delicate it also and it's yeah. very incredibly and delicate yeah. yeah so if you if you move it and mm. and something happens to break and things always break mm. or things happen yeah. things happen um it's hard to find in the place and but it's also just yeah. beautiful it's very yeah, beautiful it is, and it like ayanda said it is making a, a comeback a comeback yeah. as such i um, think a couple of Ghanaian artists have started recording in vinyl now yeah. i know bridge ambassadors doing it now mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah so i i think i always used to find myself on the dance floor as the person who a dj would like introduce a song and even if it played like the first three bars i was really like oh my god i know what it is <laughs> i'm already dancing to the song that the, the dj is mixing in as opposed to everybody's still on the other one you know and i was always like mm, i wonder why you know so then a friend of mine was doing um dj work so my, my older brother is also a dj so i started going out quite early um, because he was running events and doing all sorts of stuff. I was way too young and saw a lot of things I shouldn't have seen. <laughs> and um, so my, my, the music was always there with me. And also if you're black, you almost become entertainment for your parents. So whenever mm. there was like events or something or my mom's friends were over, aunts or whatever, like come dance <laughs> or come sing for us, go to the bedroom and prepare something and then come back and show us what you've prepared. So like that element of performance and that element of music was always kind of like ingrained. So in, in terms of like making music, I just met up with friends and I'd be like, let's go to the studio and play. I mean, I would never ex explain myself to anyone or describe myself as a singer or anything, but I always say I make music, somehow I use my voice and not, yeah.
So it's not necessarily perfection. It's just no. I didn't study field. even that drum that's over there. Nobody's taught me how to play it. I just and I think you you can sample something. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, Danny, this is your first time in. It's your first time too. Is your yes. first time in West Africa or just yes. Ghana? Yes. No, no, no. So I I was here in my end of March. We're gonna be able for that drum. Second time. Yeah. yeah. It's your first time in yeah. Ghana. What have you experienced so far? Because for me, when I'm thinking of you know, even Pan-Africanism and us uniting. I'm always thinking of just Nigerians, right? And <laughs> here I am on the set. We have two Ghanaians and two South Africans. Yeah. And I think that is amazing. What, has, what are some cultural shocks you've, you've experienced so far, if any, at all? Um, well, cultural shocks is a difficult... I don't know how I feel about the word. Okay, that's not exactly. <laughs> what are some surprises? Um, some surprises? surprises is how good the fish is here. <laughs> the fish is so good. Like, I'm sorry I'm talking about food, but food is my first love. If you, if you know me, you know food is my first love. And the fish and the food is really good. Um, people are really kind. Mm, so kind. People are incredibly kind in Ghana. Mm. And willing to go, the, like, like, just willing to put so much aside to assist you and to help you mm. or to just accommodate you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's one of the most, um, if, you, if you'd like to call it that, shocking things I've experienced um, coming, um, coming and experiencing that, that like generosity and kindness and, and um, willfulness that mm -hmm. comes from a place of, of um, just genuine, a yeah. genuine place. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something as a creative person that you um, sometimes can become incredibly jaded to mm -hmm. because the creative industry in its insularness can be really um, exclusionary and really mm. um, hierarchical and function in a way where if you know someone that's the only way you're going to get in or if you don't know that person then your work's not going to be recognized in mm. some way mm. so to experience kindness and it's just genuine like everyday people-ness is always beautiful I um, think yeah thank you yeah mm. now Nick, for those of us who missed yesterday tell us what we missed and also what to expect from now till oh. Sunday. So Just take your time and walk us through everything. So yesterday we started at around 4. Mm -hmm. And we started with a procession to the Manche Dadeban's house. Mm -hmm. And we met his, um, his court in front of his house. So the procession was led by Papu Samoa. Mm -hmm. And he's a sort of spiritual leader in the community. And he led us to the chief's house and for libation and exchange pleasantries and had a procession on High Street all the way back to Brazil House, the cradle of Afro-Brazilian people in Ghana. And we, uh, for libation again, asked the gods for help during this time. And then there, were, there was dancing by the Gara Cultural Group and they sang very beautiful Dagati songs entertained the crowd. It was so beautiful. We had we also had Karen Lee singing and opening up the exhibition. So there's work from Hakim Adam, Josie Kiwire, um Ofwe Amegafi uh, Amegashi, sorry, mm -hmm. and April Bay. And also Kofi Agozo and his wife have some really beautiful paintings at Brazil House. So you can check that out during the week of the festival mm -hmm. or on the weekend. And yeah, that was about it's a lot in, in yeah. a day. Yeah, mm. and today we have the labs, all week we're having the labs. So from from today till Friday, we're having the labs at Cocoon and Folks Place. Okay. So today we're at Folks Place and we're doing workshops, um, panel Folks discussions. Folks Place is our national theater. Yeah, mm. panel discussions and film screenings. So Danny's workshop is going to be happening in folks place there will be PM. film 12, film screenings 12. 12. too yeah okay. tomorrow we have more film screenings more panel discussions thursday we have film screenings and an acoustic night it's free for thursday so just show up and that's join also some. at national Theater. yeah also so at national from today Theater. to thursday we're going to no, national wednesday is at cocoon cocoon so that's we're alternating see. between okay. cocoon and national. folks place okay. yeah so today at Folks Place, tomorrow at Cocoon, Thursday at Folks Place, 
and then Friday. Let's let's hold on on Friday. Yeah. Let's so. What time should we show up uh, between today and Thursday? Um, if you show up at 12. 12 is fine. Yeah, it's a packed day. Like, okay. activities from 12 to till 6 p.m. Okay. Yeah. And on Friday is a special one. We have yes, a... that's what I said. Let's, we have a <laughs> masquerade party. <laughs> and it's a dress-up party. I'm coming okay. as a mechanic. <laughs> So, um, I actually thought you dressed up today. No, 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 no. no. I usually dress like this. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> yeah, so Friday, there's a masquerade jam. Come dressed funky, any looking, fly, anything. Um, yeah, wear a mask, anything. It's going to be a fun party. We have Bujin playing, Ayanda's playing. Wow. We have Akan. Uh, Akan will be performing. Rumor, who's now Nana Benyin. Is playing. Um, we've got Young Puppy playing.